Hi, this is Milton Chup, uh, adding another video tutorial to the list that we have in our channel. This particular video, we're going to talk about converting your FS9 GMAX models to Flight Sim 10 or FSX native GMAX models. This addresses a GMAX conversion to GMAX FSX native. And what I want to talk about is uh, the process I've gone through and revised to uh, do some successful conversions. I've only done four, so I'm not uh, an expert by any means in all of the things FSX uh, SDK-wise, especially materials, because that takes a little time. But uh, the general process flow I've got, I think, nailed down pretty good, and uh, I wanted to share that with those of you that may be uh, embarking on such a trick. So uh, with that, let's get started. Uh, first of all, <clears throat> before you can convert your uh, FS9 GMAX source to FSX native, you've got to have your FSX SDK system development kit set up because it works differently than the FS9 SDK. And if you have not set that up, you need to go to FS Developer. Uh, dot com as you see right here find the wiki go to the main menu bar click on that go to the wiki and then look for tools uh, once you get to the tools you can uh, you have a lot to select from but uh, you want to find the SDK setup instructions for your specific version of FSX. It's very important to follow those instructions carefully to get a successful setup. Otherwise, you're going to just get wrapped up in frustration. But once you have that done, we can proceed with where we go from there. So here's uh, basically what I do. <clears throat> I've got, I don't know, 50 or 60 projects I've done in uh, FS9, so I don't want to uh, destroy the source for any of that. So what we're going to do is uh, keep our work separate between FS9 and FSX because I'm supporting, still supporting the FS9 side. So um, <clears throat> what I do then is I create a new GMAX folder for each aircraft project I'm doing. <clears throat> Call it GMAX FSX just to eliminate confusion. And uh, then I uh, copy the latest FS9 version the GMAX source over to the FSX folder and that becomes my starting point. Uh, lastly I go to uh, FS9 aircraft folder and copy it over to FSX and do some basic setups so that it can receive exports from uh, my new FSX work. And basically it's uh, just a matter of uh, changing the model folder contents so that you have two models, one for the exterior and one for the interior. And uh, the other thing you can do is create a common texture folder uh, because in FSX you have that ability so that only the liveries, uh, the livery textures only need to re have those things unique to that livery like fuselage wings, uh, nacelles, whatever. So create that and uh, <coughs> I'm going to try to provide some uh, basic placeholder bump and spec maps that you can use in FSX that essentially neutralizes their effect so that you can uh, uh, put those in your, put them in your materials when you create materials for your new aircraft and uh, they'll be there and ready for the painters to uh, to develop uh, new bumps and specs for you. So with that said. Um, we pop up GMAX here. <clears throat> this is a FS9 aircraft in its raw form. I just converted this aircraft, but uh, this is the copy of the FS9 version. And uh, you'll see in it uh, FS9 materials, which are quite different. And you'll know they're FS9 because that's all you get on the material uh, primary page. That's it. Whereas in FSX, you get a lot more stuff down below. And uh, we'll talk about this, that some more in a bit. So let's uh, get back to the these summary steps here. The process I follow. I'm trying to keep this sh uh, you know, short but meaningful. So 
we've got the setup done and uh, we're ready to go so my basic process for converting this GMAX source over to FSX is is this I've pulled in the, a copy of my FS9 model so I, I go through it uh, look at its structure etc I refamiliarize myself because of some of this stuff I haven't touched in many years like this uh, aircraft uh, I just pulled up it's been since 2012 since I, I touched it but uh, uh, hang on a second <clears throat> So I go through the GMAX just to see how it's structured. I see if there's a separate exterior model from interior model or if the BC is included in the exterior model, which I do a lot uh, because they're simple enough <coughs> uh, and try not to have to maintain two separate models. Just a time saver. <coughs> but if it has a separate model, then that then uh, you need to maintain that as well. And it only takes uh, me five to ten minutes to go through and kind of analyze how I've structured that particular model. Uh, after that, I take a look at the materials. And uh, uh, the reason you do that is a lot of times you don't realize it, but you create a lot of materials when you're uh, working your way through uh, aircraft build. And uh, you'll, you'll see, uh, they'll end up, you'll see a lot of them that are basically unused. You may have used them, uh, made some change to them, or copied a part, or whatever and you end up with a lot of unused materials so I usually start out by cleaning up the materials because those are big overheads and obviously you're not going to want to convert them you won't have to convert them to FSX materials later on so it starts with a little housekeeping here so we're going to use the material navigator and look at all the materials used and you can rename uh, with a prefix them if you wish uh, and instead of FS9, like I say here, the last one I did, I just uh, put a ZZ in front of the material name, and that puts them all at the bottom. So when you start creating FSX materials, they're not in your way. And then later on, uh, when you get all done, you'll delete all those uh, FS9 materials or ZZ prefixed, whatever. And that takes uh, 10 or 15 minutes. Let's just pull that up, and uh, I'll show you what's going on with that. So here we go. <clears throat> Here's the material editor. If you click on this material navigator button, it pulls up this guy. And usually when this comes up, it has the maps showing. You don't really need that as you're going through this. Not right now, anyhow. If you do, you can turn it on for a minute and then turn it back off because it's a lot easier to read, as you can see. when You've got a straight list of this stuff. And if you'll notice, every material that has no parts listed is an unused material so you can just double click on that and delete it over here on the material editor it pops it up in the material editor when you double click it so you can delete that material and you can go down the list and do a, do a pretty quick cleanup just get rid of those unused materials so you're not stumbling over them as you get busy here with the other more important things going on so you just go through and delete them until you get down to the bottom this particular aircraft being an old one had uh, a lot of materials. We don't work that way today, but back in the days with slow computers, you had a lot of materials with very small textures. And uh, as opposed to today, you uh, can have 4096 textures and pretty much get uh, everything on three or four textures or materials in your uh, aircraft. So that's what that's all about. So what we, what I usually do then is go through and uh, I'll pop these up one at a time. And I'll just come over here and prefix it. Uh, prefix it with a ZZ. Well, not like that, hopefully. ZZ. And uh, press Enter. And that puts that material then at the bottom of the list, as you can see down here. So when you get done, all these will go to the bottom of the list, which is all you'll have to start with. But when you start creating the FSX materials, uh, they won't be in your way. And you'll see what you got, and uh, it makes it just makes it easier and simple, simple to organize your work that way. All right, so let's get back to the process here. So once the materials are done, that's a good part of it. And then, of course, uh, I say that took 10 or 15 minutes. It uh, took me a little bit longer with this aircraft because it had so many materials. Okay, the next thing I want to do is. Uh, Make sure that the model's in good shape before I uh, 
go converting it to FSX. One of the things FSX is very sensitive to uh, are parts that aren't scaled properly. So we're going to go check scale. So let's pull GMAX back up here. The way we do that is unhide your model or models if you'd like. If you've got separate models for interior and exterior, I'll just unhide them all. And then open up your graph editor here, track view, and open up a track view. Uh, I already have one tailored to my needs here. So, and it's, uh, it's looking specifically at only the scales for every part. And all these uh, transform scales need to read 100, 100, 100. And you just go down the list. And if you see any that aren't that, and they need to be changed. Why do you change them? Well, you, you can't do it here, unfortunately. <laughs> you got to go up to uh, get the drop down box here. You got to go up to the list. May as well just go into alphabetic mode here and look for belly beacon, or you, you can actually key it in, but it's right here. If you open that, and you'll see over here to the right, at the top right, it's uh, selected. And then you want to click on your uh, <coughs> your hierarchy button here and effect pivot only. And just come down to the bottom and reset scale. This is reset scale. Now if it, when I do this, watch this scale number here change. Boom. So that's done. And uh, if there was a hierarchy of things here that belong to Belly Beacon, usually when you reset its scale, it throws them off and you'll have to reset them too. But that's just the nature of the beast. So you need to go down to the list here and check. Now the ones that are really important that FSX is sensitive to is anything that is animated. So if you have something that's animated and uh, has, has not had the scale reset, it will not function correctly. So you just got, need to go down through the process and do it. Here's a C gear collar. It's not animated. These are animation tracks here, so you can tell the ones that are animated and the ones that are not. So you just need to go down and uh, reset the scale, select each of these. And in some cases, when you get into a hierarchy and it's asking you to change every one of them, at that point, once you've selected the first one, uh, then you can. Uh, go into display subtree mode because it's going to work you right down the hierarchy. As this is the way this is displayed here, same way it's displayed here. So that's the way that works. So you need to uh, do that and make this easy to do for you and easy to view. You need to set up your track view with these settings. Uh, show hierarchy objects transforms you, and just scale here. You don't need a position in rotation. It's just stuff in your way. No tracks, visibility tracks, and static values. That's all you need to get the information I've got here. You don't need any of this stuff. So you can select none there. The only thing you show over here is visible objects only. You don't want anything else. Okay, and select OK. And give it a name over here. I called mine scale check. So that's that way you're only looking at scales here. You're not looking at uh, hundreds of other things that are available to look at. And this is very important. So do that up front. Get your housekeeping done. And that will make the process go a lot faster and eliminate some frustrations when you're checking out animations. Okay, that's, uh, that's that part here, uh, 2.5. Uh, moving on to number three. You guys can screenshot or screen capture these things if you'd like. <clears throat> and uh, in case you didn't uh, remember to do that, if you do it right now, boom, and catch that page, and we'll move down to number three. <clears throat> okay, number three, keyframe animated standard FS9 parts. Um, so next step is to animate all the non-keyframed FS9 animations like left flap, uh, Left tire, uh, left tire, uh, still, uh, and blurred. Same with you know the right side, etc. But all those were standard animations by uh, FS9. Well, you get no freebies in FSX. You have to animate these things, and they're simple to do. Just, just takes a little more time. Same with the elevator rudder ailerons. So, and I'm going to show you 
<clears throat> give you something here that uh, makes all of that a little bit easier for you. Anyhow, you need to ensure that all those standard non-keyframed FS9 animations uh, get animated. So that's a good thing to start with next is just go through and get all those parts animated. And that's going to take you maybe two or three hours depending on the aircraft obviously and how many animations you have. But you'd be surprised how much uh, keyframed animations you do use. And, and if you use uh, some of the other flap types, you've already got them keyframed. So that won't be an issue either. Also keep in mind that uh, the animation manager is going to require, even if uh, for like suspension animations in FS9, that you used one, uh, 100 uh, keyframe 100 to keyframe 200, you have to put in a keyframe, a position keyframe, at zero. If you don't have one, just uh, pull up the part, add a position frame, uh, uh, position uh, frame at key, key uh, at frame zero. <laughs> And uh, while it's sitting there, click on the animate button, move the slider all the way to the right to 200 or wherever that animation ends, and just click it off and you're done. So it only takes a couple seconds. Uh, but you need to do that to make sure those animations are going to work for you. Okay, let's see. Oh, there's one other thing I want to show you. Uh, there's this uh, tool that Larry Green put together. Uh, it kind of makes it uh, easy some of this. You don't have to go looking up the information for our, all your exterior parts and interior parts. And he's telling you how many keyframes they use, 0 to 100, 0 to 200, etc. Where the part should be in its animation movement on the start frame, full up, full down, you know, exits closed versus open, etc. Uh, where it should be in mid frame if it has if it requires a uh, keyframe 50 on like ailerons or 0 50 and 100 50 for the neutral position <clears throat> and what the animation tag is that you'll search for in the animation manager and thus uh, just some notes and same thing for the uh, you can screenshot this if you want and do it now and then uh, inter internal parts uh, same thing very helpful I mean, this covers most of the stuff, not all of it, but uh, once you got this down, you, the rest of it will be easy. It's all in the Animation Manager and the uh, Attach Point Manager when you're uh, attaching the mouse rectangles for the VC or visibility for the lights or, you know, what have you. So, very useful tool there. Did you get a screenshot of that second page? There you go. All right. So, that part's done. We can close that now. All right. Um, let's see. Animation. Okay. Three's done. Animation manager. Okay. Now, for all those, uh, now that you've got your standard FS9 animations uh, keyframes, you're ready to actually start going through and using your animation manager to make uh, assignments. Uh, if the part also needs a visibility tag using the attach point, tool. Uh, I usually do that at the same time. But sometimes I wait until I get the par all the parts done, like on props or whatever. You got four or five parts. And uh, if I start going back and forth, sometimes I'll lose my train of thought, depending on what's going on around me. And uh, I'll forget one or the other. I'll forget to do, do an animation tag or I'll forget to do an attach point tag. So sometimes I just stick with what I'm doing, finish up the animations and go back and do the visibility tags. So uh, that may take you two to three hours, depending on how much uh, how much you got going on, what kind of aircraft you got. And then next, you go uh, through your BC and do the same actions as we just went through uh, for the exterior model. The attach points uh, go through and update all your visibility objects, your effects, your mouse triangles, or tool tips. Uh, examples there, your, your uh, landing and taxi lights, your still slow and blurred props and tires, uh, VC switches and levers you know, for your mouse rectangles, your, your tool tips. <clears throat> so, you know, depending on what you got, how much you got, one to two hours maybe to do that. And then if you have any custom X, XML, uh, 
that code needs to be converted to FSX style and I can't get into all of that now but uh, I do have a, a document that I can let you screenshot that you can copy it shows you the differences you can't use uh, those custom animations that you may have used in your FS9 aircraft until you get your uh, your uh, model def file updated with those custom animation uh, uh, code XML code so they have that has to be done but let me pull that up uh, for you here modeling code differences between FS9 and FSX so I'm not sure where this a friend shared this with me but uh, there's some links that uh, you could follow if you want to screenshot that do it now and if you want to screenshot this do it now very helpful shows you the difference in the names of these tags between FSX P3 decent tags and FS9 and the highlighted ones are the ones that are different and let's go down to screenshot that now so you can see you know, some differences not a big deal but they are different screenshot that now and you can review all that later and that I think that's it no well, examples of code where no GUI ID is necessary Okay, got that all screenshotted. You're good to go. Screenshotted. Is that a word? <laughs> all right. Uh, let's see. Where are we? All right. Creating new FSX materials. Okay. Now that we've kind of gone through the aircraft and reviewed everything, we've got the animation squared away. We got the visibility tags done. We're pretty familiar with everything in that aircraft. We know that pretty much know the part names to, to expect and uh, probably familiar with the, the uh, FS9 materials we got them all renamed or you know shoved to one end of the list so it's now it's the time to create your new FSX materials so <clears throat> first of all in order to get rid of those FS9 materials we need to do the FSX materials so we'll get rid of the FS9 materials as the last thing we'll keep them around for reference because uh, uh, I don't know if you're like me, I, I draw from inventory a lot from different aircraft uh, and sometimes I, rather than copying a lot of uh, uh, textures, uh, textures like props or wheels or tires or tire treads or whatever from other aircraft, I'll just reference them in the aircraft source. So uh, before I uh, Go create a new FSX material. I look at the FS9 material, look at the source of the texture that's in it or textures, and uh, make sure I know where I'm going to get it. Then I create the new FSX material and uh, go get the uh, go get the textures it needs and uh, change the settings as uh, required for FSX. And uh, and uh, now I'm ready to apply it almost. <coughs> Okay, so when you're when you do this FSX materials, there's an important step that uh, it's going to make your job so much easier, and that's called uh, select parts by material name. Uh, at this point, when you start this process, you want to unhide your complete aircraft, even if you have an exterior and interior model. And the reason being is you're going to use a tool that selects all the parts that uses the material you've selected. And uh, so once you create your FSX material, all you have to do is say apply to the selected parts because that, and then you can hide those parts. And uh, when you get done with the process, there won't be any parts left to, uh, to, uh, and you know you're done. So anyhow, so you unhide all the aircraft parts, uh, use the material navigator to list, uh, to list all the assigned FS9 materials. Let's pull that up again. Let's see, did I close that? I guess I did. As you can see to the right here, it lists all the part names that this material is assigned to. And it doesn't matter. I mean, the list goes on and on. Uh, 
etc., etc. But the key thing is when you select a part. By the way, up here, uh, if your FSX is working correctly, you need to have a uh, FS Tools menu. And sometimes it has trouble coming up, depending on what's going on. We'll run it again. There we go. In this FS Tools uh, drop down menu, you'll see Animation Manager and Attach Point Manager. Those are the two we've been talking about. And there's an LOD name tool. One of the first things you have to do, funny I failed to mention that, was create a friendly name for your aircraft. And uh, the way you do that is, I'll do it for you right quick. I just select the exterior node. It's a dummy node. But it's all right. <clears throat> and then the LOD name. And what we want to do here is get and set the uh, GUID and friendly name. And you can just say create new GUI ID for this file. And it will recommend one. It just takes the file name, and you can use that if you'd like. Just say go. <clears throat> and that's done. That part's done. You don't even have to worry about it anymore. So that's the last time you have to use that for this uh, project. And then, of course, you got the animation manager and attach point manager. But if that FS Tools thing doesn't show up, just go to Max Script, Run Script, and double click your FS Tools menu and get it to run. So, like I said, sometimes it takes me two or three times for it to come up. Don't know why. Uh, but that's the way it is. So, uh, the other point I was going to make, of course, we need to select a part here. Let's see, try to get something with, uh, yeah, I guess it doesn't matter. Plug, plug, here. Well, I'll just take this one for example. <clears throat> and then we're going to run. Uh, run a script and we're going to run this select by material. You can double click it or open it either way. Okay and this is selected multiples and it tells you here so what this little tool does for you is you don't have to go to your material navigator and individually go find all of these parts that's in the list to select them so that you can uh, that uh, apply your new FSX material to. So by using that one little tool uh, to select all these parts for you for the new material you've created, boom, it does it. All you have to do now is apply that new material and you can then hide those parts. You're done with it. You're done with the material. You're done with the parts. So boom, that's gone. That just makes the project smaller. You've made progress. So that's what that tool is all about, and that's why it's so important. It saves you tons of time if you use that. All right. Let's see. Very important. Okay. So here's the general process here: creating new materials. <clears throat> Unhide all the aircraft parts. Everything in your scene. Uh, use the material navigator to list all the FS, all the assigned FS9 materials, and the parts that use them just work from the top down. The simple, easy, and the re what makes that simple and easy to work that way is that select by material script. Uh, so it doesn't matter the sequence; it's just working down the list is all you have to do. So you select, uh, double click an FS9 material in the material editor. Uh, the material navigator and it shows up in the material editor then you can uh, look at the information the textures it uses it where it gets it what have you look at its properties if you want you know does it use specular or is it, is it uh, only 50% uh, opaque you know whatever so using that information and how you create a new FSX material uh, once you create the new FSX material you need to go get the textures for that and then set the basic settings for that material. And then once uh, once you've done that, you, uh, the parts that <coughs> I usually select the parts afterwards, but now select one of the parts used by that material from the navigator list. Easy to do because you can just hit the, the uh, drop down. Just, uh, just select any of the materials and you can hit the drop down here to find that material. Do it alphabetically. It's probably faster. That way you can key it in up here. <clears throat> okay. And then uh, once you've selected that uh, part, 
open the Select by Material script. Double click it or open it and select all the parts listed by Navigator. It does it for you. Once you've done that, you can simply apply the new FSX material to all those parts. Then you just simply hide those parts. If you want, right now, you can delete the old FS9 material using the material editor by going back over to the navigator, selecting the FS9 material, and then double-clicking it, and then it shows up in the editor. You can delete it. Or, if you're unsure of yourself, you can leave all those FS9 materials to the end, so you're happy with everything, then you can go down and delete them. Alright, so... Then you select the next material from the navigator and repeat this process here. Unhide uh, uh, the process of uh, selecting the part, uh, running select by navigator, select by material, <clears throat> and then uh, looking at the uh, properties of that material, getting the uh, textures in for that material, setting it up, and then uh, what have you, just repeat the process. Uh, we've already talked about this. Uh, I actually went back and inserted it after I wrote this up on 2.5, and that's about the uh, scaled parts and using the graphics, uh, using the uh, whatever the heck, heck that's called. Jeez, um, graph editors, track view using track view to uh, fix any scaling issues you may have. So that's basically the process I use. Of course, uh, exporting and testing. I, uh, when I ever make, I make uh, fairly significant progress working through here, like uh, starting with the animations. Once I get uh, you know, eight or 10, 12 uh, group of animations done, I'll export and go test it come back and do some more, export and go test it, come back and do some more, export and go test it. It's important to uh, export and test frequently. Not Do not wait till you're done with the whole process. <clears throat> uh, just important to do that. The export uh, with GMAX is a direct export to FSX. doesn't go through any inter intermediary steps. You can export uh, your ex Interior model or interior model separately, individually, is the way I do it. <clears throat> and uh, it goes in about three to five seconds. Boom, but done. And you open up uh, FSX, check it out. Uh, I see something's not working there. You find out, oh, I must have left, uh, I forgot to use the animation manager, or I forgot to use the, the uh, attach point tool, or whatever, or it didn't take, or whatever. And you can get those fixed up as you go through. Don't wait to the end and find out you have 20 different problems like it drives drive you crazy trying to sort them all out. All right, so that's the basic process. Now let's talk about some details, and this shouldn't take too long. Uh, translating your custom XML code from FS9 to FSX syntax and getting to grips with the model def XML organization is one thing to address, but you don't need to do it right now until you're absolutely ready. I would do everything else to this aircraft, getting everything converted and worked, working, before doing this. Uh, and, and it's only because it's a kind of a separate deal. It works differently, and it's it's uh, interesting to get your head head around. But uh, let's see if I've got. Yeah, uh, Larry Green uh, gave his advice on setting this stuff up to keep uh, keep your stuff separate from everything else, and, and I did. There's three groups that you add for your stuff, and uh, an easy way to find them is to uh, to associate your name with those groups. So I use my first name. Say so just find next. Okay, we. We find uh, the end, uh, where there's the beginning. Here it is, Milton's gauges. So these are, uh, and they're not actually gauges, they're just any parts. But these are the parts, uh, most of which are dummy parts, that I've added. And then there's a group uh, add, add that you do, animation group. And then find next here. There's my animation group, and it doesn't have a lot of stuff in it. It's just a number of things that I've 
associated with it. That's the end of the animation group, and then this will take me down to. Oh, what is this? oh it's, it's looking right. It's the end of the group. <clears throat> and then here's my custom code, and I've got you know, a bunch of custom code in here. And the next find should take me to the end of that list, which it does. So uh, there's three sections in the uh, model def XML file, and uh, it's just a good idea rather than uh, blending all your stuff with the uh, with the with the file as large as it is. It's just hard. It would make it very hard to find your stuff. So uh, recommendation is to set it up separately and. Uh, Set your stuff up separately at the end of each section and uh, build from there. And uh, where does that come into play? Well, let's pull up GMAX again and see here. Close out this. <clears throat> when you go to uh, use FSX tools, I guess I need to select something here. To, uh, yeah, that's good. Pull up the uh, animation manager. You see Milton's gauges here. The list shows all the parts that I added. I think all these are dummy parts, but that's what they are. That's all I have in there right now. <clears throat> so it, rather than searching through the whole world's list of stuff out there, and it goes on and on and on, <laughs> You can just say, I want to see my parts. And this is important, too, if you're using, uh, if you're building 3D gauges. You end up with a lot of parts in here, and you don't want to be trekking through the hundreds of parts that are in the uh, overall list to find your stuff. So that's the importance of setting up your groups and uh, what have you. So just a little stuff about that. All right. All uh, right. Let's see, we talked about uh, keyframing your standard FS9 stuff, okay. And we talked about the uh, standard animation setup uh, worksheet that I'll let you uh, give you a chance to screenshot. And uh, everything must have uh, keyframe zero added if you don't currently have it and animated. Uh, materials conversion. The select by material script doesn't come with your SDK. You got to go looking for it. Uh, this is the guy who wrote it. If you just Google this or Bing it or whatever search engine you use, you'll find it. It uh, comes. It's just a simple script. You plug it into your uh, GMAT, your FSX uh, game packs uh, uh, script folder, and uh, boom, it's ready to use. And uh, we talked about how to use that. Let's see, a lot of this is just regurgitation. Uh, we're talking about how to use the animation manager here. Uh, when you got a part you're ready to animate, or that's already animated, but you need to tag it with the animation manager. And actually, in the long run, this makes it easier for you. Uh, ensure all, all animations have keyframes before using the animation manager <coughs> to assign the proper tags. You must open that manager, use it, then close this tool for each animation. You can't just go down a list of parts leaving this open. you got to open it, use it, close it for each animation. And it's the same with the attach point tool, actually. So you select a part. Check its animation keyframes. Make sure you got a zero uh, position key, uh, and uh, all the keyframes are in place. Note their, uh, note where they are starting and ending, zero to 200, zero to 100, zero to 50, whatever they are. Make sure they're cool, and uh, open the FS uh, Tools Animation Manager. Scroll to find the proper animation tag. Did I do that for you? I think I showed you, but uh, let's put it in perspective here. I've still got my uh, lower gear selected, so uh, we just scroll down to uh, this is the right gear. You go to right gear, and that's what it is. It's just right gear. It's all you don't get specific. So any animation in the right gear uses right gear. So you click on that. You note the. Uh, I don't know how to get rid of that. Well, I haven't added keyframe zero here yet because this is when I 
this is the raw project but you had keyframe zero here notice it's got a 100 and a 200 so our animations would be zero to 200 and then we select create and what that does is create the animation tag but it doesn't associate it with the part until you say update selection so you have to click that so once you've done that you're done you close it now, what if you made a mistake? You realized it afterwards. Well, you open this back up, bring up animation tool. You notice the part's still selected, and it shows that you what you've assigned to it. So you have to go back to find right gear, select it. You don't have to put it in the keyframes, and then you can delete that associated tag. Well, that deletes the tag, but you also have to update the part to remove the tag from the part. So, boom, now that's done. Now we're back to square zero. Close it, reopen it, and now we can assign the appropriate tag to it and go through the process. So, it's select the part, find it in the list, make sure your animation, uh, all your animation keys are there, enter start and end, create the tag, associate it with the part. That's, that's the process. All right. Alrighty then, back to the uh, list here. Alright, that's how to use the animation uh, manager basically. And that talks about removing it. You can screenshot this too if you want. <coughs> okay, attach point uh, tool, pretty much the same thing to assign effects, mouse tools, and visibilities mouse rectangles or tooltips of the VC or, or visibilities. You must open, use, and close the tool for each assignment. Uh, landing taxi lights are examples that require effect and visibility tags. The effect is the light itself. The visibility tag is show the light when it comes on and not show it when it goes off. I mean, that's pretty simple stuff. But it's a, it's a neat tool. It keeps you, uh, saves you a lot of time running around looking for stuff and figuring out what names of things are. For example, I don't know whether we can hit this or not. Let's see here. Well, that's not the right one, but I'll we'll show you how to use the tool. Oops, tool anyhow. Let's say I wanted to assign an effect and a visibility tag to this. And each one of these clicks opens another window down here. So you also got mouse rectangles for... Uh, for the uh, BC parts, like your throttle handles and what have you. <clears throat> okay, so we've this is what we want to add. So, what effect do we want to attach? So, we want to make it a landing light. So, we just scroll down to FX landing in here somewhere, probably. Oh, there it is. And then we want to uh, a visibility associated with this. So we go down to light land. Oh, it's off screen. Hang on. I'm sorry. <laughs> Get wrapped up and figure out what I'm doing here. Light land is what I'm looking for. All right. Light landing visibility. Okay. So now this is the effect file name of the F uh, landing effect. FX landing. You'll see in your effects folder. And the visibility uh, component is light landing visibility. Okay, and then once you've got that selected, you go up and say attach to selected geometry. Okay, and there you go. That's done. When it's done, you can close it. Now, what if you get that done? You say, oh gosh, I didn't do that right. I used the wrong name or something. Well, you go to properties, and you'll see attach point landing, which it creates and associates with that part. And if you go to uh, user defined and object properties in GMAX, you'll see here that the attach point name is FX landing and the object is FX landing. So, in order to delete this, and the visibility is landing light visibility, in order to delete that, just select all this stuff, select all this stuff, and hit the delete key. And that removes that effect and the visibility condition from the part. Make sense? So to delete 
uh, visibility and effects, etc., you go to the properties of the part. To delete animations, you have to kind of go through the, re the animation uh, manager process again and say delete and then update the fact that you deleted it to the part. So it's a little easier to delete here, it's a little faster. But anyhow, you see how simple those tools are to use. So very nice. Let's go back to uh, the list here. See what else we've got to share before we wrap this up. All right, tick 18. If you use tick 18, which is kind of a system generated uh, uh, animation tool that updates like you know, 18 times a second or something like that, <clears throat> like for animating a pilot's head movements or something like that. If you use tick 18, they're not available. It's not available in FSX, but what they've uh, made available are uh, six things called ambient. Ambient 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So if you've got a TIC 18 need, just uh, replace it with Ambient or Ambient 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. You can only use each one on one part. So if you got more than six of them, then I'm not sure what you do. <laughs> but uh, you have those six available to you. And they work. I'm using them. Okay, on exports, uh, we talked about setting up two model files, one for the exterior, one for the interior, similar to this, with the air, aircraft exterior name, the aircraft interior model name. Uh, export selected, the exterior model, remembering to select the export animations, that's a tick box on, that comes up on your export. Be sure to export the animations or it won't. Uh, if you only have one model and you're using that for both interior and exterior, probably all you have to do then is uh, go back to GMAX, hide your pilots, and export the same thing to your interior model. And that's the way that's done. Um, uh, this talks, you can screenshot this. This talks about bumps and spec maps. So uh, when you first create. Uh, uh, convert this model. If you add normal bumps and specs to this without getting them set up with the specific textures for this aircraft, it's going to have all kinds of shading artifacts. Uh, it's going to mess up the painter's ability to repaint. So you need to make sure you, if you're adding bumps and specs, that you provide neutral ones that uh, have no influence on the shading or specular. Now, spec models or uh, spec materials are basically the same as your primary uh, diffuse texture material. So that's not a problem. Bump maps are. Bump maps uh, knock things out of kilter for you. So uh, you either uh, have to provide separate models with Atom or provide those with these things already in place in your materials, which is what I'd recommend, but provide a neutralized bump map. Uh, so uh, it's there and available to use when a painter wants to grab hold of it and make it fancy. Okay, what else we got here? Okay, and uh, you know if you can find if you have a model that you already have uh, uh, GMAX or in material sample set up for glass and chrome. Um, Blurred prop, mesh, etc., etc. You know, the materials, uh, you'll have a lot of fun with materials if you're just getting into FSX materials. You need to really read the SDK on materials and uh, study the teapot examples because they give you many, many examples of how to do different things with your, uh, with your, uh, to your <laughs> diffuse textures on your aircraft. Uh, it's amazing all the stuff you can do. So it takes a little while to get your head around it all. But uh, if you study the teapot, that's my advice to you. Go to the SDK, study uh, FSX materials, look for the teapot, and go through all the examples. There's the rollovers, uh, a list of rollovers down the left side. And as you roll over each of the different material setups, it explains what it's doing and and the uh, the effect. So. Anyhow, I hope this has been helpful. It's uh, kind of a guide to, that I work through uh, to do my conversions. Uh, and it seems to work well to have a structure like this. 
and uh, it's a good head start. So um, I know I've probably missed some stuff, and if I think it's important, I'll do a follow-up video on this, and, uh, and at least I hope uh, this gets you thinking about some things and gets you off in the right direction, and uh, look forward to seeing those aircraft or ships or scenery, whatever, get moved into FSX from FS9. Help make the community uh, all the better for it. Uh, thanks, guys, for listening, and uh, hang in there. I'll be back with some more. <laughs> Have a good day.